Hi, my name is Brett Glazer. I'm the MIA Laboratory Manager here for Vitra Life. I've been working in the MIA Lab since 2008, and our mission has been to create the most sensitive uh, MIA assay possible to ensure the quality of the products that Vitra Life is producing. MIA is a mouse embryo assay, and it's utilized to detect toxicity in compounds and to assist us in uh, evaluating the quality of the media that's manufactured. For EMEA, we use the one cell mouse embryo and we expose media or the mouse embryos themselves to the materials or the products that we're producing. The assay is a five-day assay that allows embryos to develop to the blastocyst stage and then we can make qualitative and quantitative uh, assessments on the quality and the toxicity present um, for the materials that are used. The way we do MIA is to take a raw material and expose it to our simplified media and utilize that media in the culture of mouse, one cell mouse embryos. The mouse embryos are placed into a culture environment for five days and at that point we determine the number of blastocysts that have developed on day five. The development of blastocysts to day five is used as the criteria for release of finished products. And what we see in our laboratory is that morphologically we may have embryos that look very similar. But using a technique of cell staining, we can go inside the embryo and actually determine the viability by counting the number of cells that are present. We can do this by doing a total cell count or how many cells make up the inner cell mass and the trivectoderm. And for specific raw materials that may be more sensitive or more variable, we can use a dual stain or differentially stain the embryos looking at specifically the trifectoderm cells and the intercellular mass cells. An assessment is then made between the test and the control to determine whether or not a material will be passed and utilized in the manufacturing process. This is also performed for the finished product and this allows us to determine whether or not a finished product meets our quality standards. Over the years, there's been a transition from the two-cell mouse embryo to the one-cell. The one-cell mouse embryo is the most sensitive stage of the embryo, so it makes sense to begin at this process. And we see this with most manufacturers using the one-cell mouse embryo. Another way to uh, increase the sensitivity of the assay is by creating specific medias designed to remove the compounds that help support embryo development. Another aspect is to remove compounds such as albumin, as albumin can often mask the effect of these toxic compounds. In our industry, one of the criticisms about the mouse embryo assay is that it hasn't been standardized, and there's the possibility for variation in the results, potentially between laboratories or between investigators because of the setup or the design of the assay. As far as the release of products, a MIA assay is required uh, for the release of finished products and that lends itself to some question about quality as quality can vary um, and depending on the sensitivity of the assay that toxicity or lack of quality or inconsistency in quality might not be picked up. The release criteria for the MIA is a series of quality control tests, one of those of course being the mouse embryo assay. For the mouse embryo assay we're required to indicate the last assist development on day five. Vitra Life uses a series of additional endpoints to determine the quality um, and the viability of embryos that have developed when exposed to raw materials and the finished product. While this information often is not on the certificate of analysis, it's utilized in the determination of whether or not a product is released or if a raw, raw material will be used in the manufacturing process. One of the aspects of the MIA test that we've designed is to optimize the test. Now, by optimizing it, what we're really talking about is creating an extremely stressful environment for these mouse embryos to grow. By removing the compounds that are typically in the media that help support embryo development, we can start to see the effect of the toxic compounds, um, specifically in the raw materials, and that allows us to eliminate them um, and deselect them so they're not part of the manufacturing process. The MIA has been designed to identify toxic or suboptimal compounds that are often enter the system. By identifying these suboptimal compounds, we can minimize the stress in the culture environment, which leads to the development of more viable embryos. More viable embryos ultimately leads to the increase in the clinical outcome. 
The MIA is the most valuable tool Vitro Life has to ensure safe and consistent products. This makes it possible for our customers to create an optimal environment for embryo development and ultimately helping patients become parents.